What's up, rock stars? It's Rocks with a little bit of talk about what's at the top of the blog. So let's get to it. All right, you guys got a couple of subjects. None of them super exciting, and actually, a few of them sad, and you know, most of them about a lot of pain and heartbreak. Let's start the stories off with Will Smith, not the actor rapper Will Smith, but the football player Will Smith. He and his wife were leaving a festival in New Orleans this past weekend, and uh, as they were driving on the streets of New Orleans, they ran into the back of a Hummer H2. This particular Hummer H2 belonged to a Mr. Cardell Hayes, and after Mr. Hayes pulled over and got out of his vehicle, there were some words exchanged between Hayes and Smith, and all of a sudden, a simple fender bender erupted into road rage, and the result was the death of Smith shot and killed, um, his wife injured, shot in the leg. Everyone was wondering how something so minimal could turn into something so tragic. Cardell Hayes never left the scene. The police was called and arrived and arrested him without uh, incident. His bail was set at a million dollars and as of now looks like he is being charged for second degree murder. Many people are upset about the fact that he is being charged for second degree murder and not first degree murder. Will Smith's father even put out a statement saying that um, you know, he doesn't see where no one sees that his son was, you know, murdered cold blood and it should be a first degree charge. Right after Cardell Hayes was arrested and he secured his lawyers, his lawyer put out a statement saying that there was another gun at the scene um, and that Cardell Hayes was simply uh, defending his life. Okay, shortly after that, the police department in New Orleans did confirm that there was a second gun in the car which changes kind of the scope of the whole investigation um, and results in death. Now, of course, it still is a tragedy. You know, something like this would end up this way, but it makes you look at the situation a little differently. There are witnesses that are saying that during the altercation, um, Smith did brandish a gun and flash it at Hayes. And uh, this was when Hayes pulled out his gun shot him one time in the chest, seven times in the back, okay? And I'm not an investigator, no forensic scientist, nothing like that, but you know, maybe that seems like he shot him originally in the chest. You know, maybe um, Will Smith slumped over or it was still trying to reach or, you know, whatever was going on there. And um, Hayes continued to shoot him in his back to make sure that he was not going to indeed get shot himself and I think that it's unfortunate but I also think that um, Hayes probably has a case here for a couple of reasons one he didn't leave the scene of the crime it was not a hit and run even though he was the one that was hit he stayed there until the police came and two the fact that the lawyer knew that there was a second gun there that meant that Hayes had to have seen a second gun which also doesn't necessarily mean it was flashed at him but I don't know about you but I'm not really waiting for somebody to kill me if I have the means to stop them okay sounds kind of heartless but that's really kind of what it is. Two guns, it's a gun battle at this time. And senseless, of course, because, you know, like I said, simple fender bender turns into the murder of, I think Will Smith had two kids. They say that Cardell Hayes is a father of four, I think they said, single father at that. So yeah, it's a lot of families ruined. Two fathers that are not with their children, a wife who no longer has the support of her husband, and uh, just it's just it's just a senseless, terrible tragedy. And another reason why gun control is important, you know, I don't know if. Louisiana is a state, it probably is a state where you're able to have a weapon in your car. I know Georgia allows you to have um, a concealed weapon as long as you have a license to do so. Um, but you know, when you have these things at your, at your ready for something like this, it's just terrible. You know, an argument turns into murder. So yeah, our you know prayers are up for both families. Definitely the Smith family is just terrible. Uh, lives wasted. But you guys, let me know what you think about this. I'm sure there's way more to it. I'm just giving you guys the surface and kind of what I feel about it. But um, yeah, I don't know if this is cut and dried and as easy of a case as we thought it would be originally. Leave your comments about it below. 
Child, I've been talking about Azalea Banks quite a bit these last few weeks, haven't I? Okay, well today, you know, I kind of got some good news to share. So on Twitter, I think it was just yesterday. I think it was just yesterday or maybe two nights ago. There was a Twitter follower by the name of Blue underscore, what was his name? There was a Twitter follower by the name of Blue underscore Bone who suggested to Erica Badu that she and Azalea Banks make up. Azalea Banks originally was not with it, said, you know, that she is one of those women who just wants to be the only one known for kicking knowledge in the hip hop, uh, you know, in the hip hop culture. Basically, Erica Badu continues to hate on her. Erica Badu did take the more mature route and uh, she did apologize. She basically said that I know that you're an advocate for our people and for that I apologize, humbly. Right after she said that, Azalea Banks said she'd accept her apology. <laughs> Wasn't that nice of her? You know, she was hurt that Erica Badu came after her, but the fact of the matter is that her mother was a big fan of Erica Badu, that Erica Badu had helped her mother through a lot of painful times, and that she also apologized for the stupid things that she said because she actually looks up to Badu and I uh, think she's incredible. So, you know, you got a, a hooray for Mrs. Azalea Banks. Okay, something that could have still turned out very ugly actually turned out to be beautiful. Two sisters making up in love on Twitter. But bitch, don't get too excited because right when Azalea Banks takes two steps forward, she takes three backwards. I told you guys last week or a couple of weeks ago that I always feel that Azalea Banks is very smart. Although I believe that she's conflicted, I also believe that somewhere in the jumble of all of her thoughts, she makes a lot of good sense. And that's the only reason why I don't just completely write Azalea Banks off because she can take you there for sure. So she was on Twitter and she was expressing her feelings. You know, she feels that black men are not there for her, that, you know, when things happen and she's out there all alone, nobody steps out to protect her. Nobody steps out to um, help her, to shield her. And this is the reason why she will continue to date only white men, because they put her on a pedestal, a pedestal that black men refuse to put her on. Well, Wale, also outspoken in the Twitter sphere, okay, definitely an advocate in black Twitter, gets on and says, well, sis... The reason why is because black men fear you. Nobody wants to be embarrassed. Nobody knows how you're going to come at them. Plus, you talk bad about black men. Hell, the pedestal that you brag only white men put you on, it's a lot of room on that pedestal. And black men put black women on there who deserve it daily. Lord, why he say that, y'all? <laughs> As they went back and forth, she eventually was just like, fuck you, Wale. Okay, black men like you. I hate. I would like to put all the niggas exactly like you in jail. Now I'm paraphrasing. But the jumble of emotions that I was talking about earlier, the fact that she gets very angry and it seems to mess up her, her train of thought and what she is really trying to convey, it took over. Then she starts to berate him. She goes on and on about him. You know, it's basically, fuck you nigga. I hate you nigga. Okay, but she's saying nigger. Which for whatever reason, nigger is different <laughs> the nigga to me. We ain't even gonna get in the debate over nigger and nigga and the fact that I use nigga and I shouldn't. And you guys, I'm sorry. It's just kind of part of what I say. But um, she's saying nigger, which to me has a more negative connotation to it. And um, yeah, it was a disaster. It was a disaster only because I felt like Azalea Banks had a point. The things that she was saying um, definitely can be true in some cases. Now, are all black men like that? Absolutely not, okay? Do all white men put black women on the pedestal? Um, absolutely not. I'm sure there's white men out there that don't like Azalea Banks, wouldn't have anything to do with her. And I think Wale was trying to tell her that she's generalizing and really putting it on all black men when that's not really what the case is. But you know, and she was getting so upset and angry that she was not willing to accept what he was saying and then it just turned into this other thing. Now, did she um, <laughs> shred his ass on Twitter? Definitely so. But she didn't come out on top because Wale never lost his cool and he always basically kept the same line of thought. Like, I'm trying to talk to sis intellectually, okay, intelligently, all right, with no disrespect and look where it goes. Very reason why black men fear Azalea Banks. So. Yeah, I, I don't know, you guys. Oh, I just, I, I don't even like to talk about black women like that. You know that. But, man, somebody, what does she need? A hug? Does she need some love, you guys? Does she need some counseling, medication? What is it? Whoever has the answer to that, please 
Help Azalea Banks. Well, I ain't never talked about somebody I don't care about more than this whole Sierra and Future situation. Now, Sierra was on, was a Good Morning America the other day. They were doing, they were announcing the nominations for the Billboard Awards of 2016. She and Ludacris. They're going through the nominations, calling out the names of who is nominated. After Ludacris does, I think it was R&B, male, um, then they move on to male hip-hop artists or rap artists and they have Sierra do it and due to the overwhelming success of Future um, especially this last year of course he's nominated when it comes time for her to say his name she doesn't say it doesn't say shit his, his face is up on the damn screen and Ludacris professionally steps in says his name and his nomination um, and then she moves on now was it shade Definitely so. I've heard stories about the fact that there, there's a gag order on their case that's impending, the one that she brought against Future. They're not allowed to say each other's names in the public setting. I don't know if that's true or false. I just kind of feel like it was a little bit of a childish move. But I think I have more problem with the fact that Billboard gave her that section to read. How easy would it have been for her to read the other section that Ludacris just read and for him to read the damn rap part, especially considering he's a fucking rapper. So it's just like, you know, I don't know. I don't know for a fact if Billboard did that being messy. Maybe they didn't think that she would do that. Um, I'm not sure if she was like, I'll do it fine. I'm not saying this. I don't know how the whole thing worked out, but you know what? <laughs> who cares, you guys? That's the biggest question is who cares? Um, Future, he just did a countersuit on uh, Miss uh, uh, Sierra. And in layman's terms, the nigga said, you know what? I ain't fucked up her career. Her career was already fucked up. That damn Jackie album ain't did shit. That I Bet song was the beginning of her actually um, throwing darts at me and trying to affect my career. I ain't affecting her damn career at all. Okay, she has a whole bunch of followers. She's the one that's keeping this shit out in the streets. She's the one that's affecting her own career negatively. So we gonna put this um, case back on her. And it's a little bit of truth to all that. I mean, Future just wants to see his kid. Sierra, I'm sure, is a woman scorned. And even though in the public eye, it doesn't seem like she should be all that worried about it. Fuck, she just got engaged. She has a huge ass wedding ring. The man that asked her to marry him is a successful football player who has buku money. He seems to be 100% into her and vice versa. You know, it's just unfortunate. It's sad that she and Future cannot work out whatever the fuck the problem is so that everybody has you know these custodial rights to their kid because that's all it boils down to at this point is the child as much as future fucked her over we we can't ignore the fact that the nigga already had four baby mamas like we're really what was we thinking all right i was all for it at the beginning as well you guys remember i was talking about remember i gave that lengthy speech about rapper dick and what it does to your thinking <laughs> <laughs> I wanted it to work out. It didn't. Life happens that way sometimes. But the more mature way, especially when everybody has fucking money and the means are there, is for everyone to work it out to the best of this child. And that's how I feel about it. I, I don't care about the back and forth between Future and Sierra. She seems happy. I want people to be happy and love. Russell seems happy. Future... I want him to enjoy whatever success he's having. You guys, I'm still, I'm still dumbfounded on the fact that that damn panda song is not future. <laughs> I ain't never been so fucking, you know, just befuddled in my damn life, you guys. I swear for God. I was just like, now you say what now? I mean, sound dead on him. Dead on him. My, my daughter told me as a 19-year-old boy, child, please. Anyway, but yeah, what you guys think about this whole Sierra and Future thing? I wish they would fucking work it out, don't you? I ain't got the goddamn air on. Shit. I wonder I'm getting hot in here. Y'all, I thought I had the air on. It's just air blowing, not cold air. Bitch is fixing to sweat to death. I'm trying not to get funky out here, y'all. And I guess this whole Sierra Future thing ushers in, you know, the pretty depressing stories of uh, relationships going south. First, we got to talk about Monica and Shannon Brown. Now, they've been married since 2010. You guys remember it was a whirlwind romance. Shannon Brown left his baby mama. 
think the lady had just had the damn baby. I think he was in a in a in a video for Monica somewhere around June of 2010, and by November of 2010, honey, they had been tied the knot. Very extravagant gala. Monica seemed very happy. Shannon Brown seemed very happy. So that was what it was. Fast forward to 2016. Everything is not so happy in the Brown relationship. At least that's what the blogs are saying. That's what the sources are saying. That they haven't been too happy um, for the last few years. Um, for a number of reasons. One of them, the main reason, I guess, being infidelity. So the latest story now is... Shannon Brown supposedly slid up into some chick's DMs, okay, and um, nope, he didn't, she didn't, he didn't slide her DMs, I'm wrong. It's a lot of DM sliding, but not in this case. Um, they actually were, have been seeing each other and they were texting, I'm not sure how they got into touch with each other, but they were texting. This chick anonymously put out the story that he had been flying her around and that they had been fucking and you know all of this that he shared he was unhappy in his marriage monica does not show him love which is very interesting considering the fact that she's always on social media putting forth a very different story and social media is just a vehicle where you show people what you want them to believe what you want them to see okay i'm sure they're not gonna put on instagram when they are mad at each other when shit is going wrong so we as viewers sometimes take it upon ourselves to assume that all is well like i said the lady said that he was unhappy in his marriage and he's unhappy with his career okay shannon brown i think right now is not playing for any team or a free agent or something like that so yeah shannon brown you know the story i guess seems like it could be true again you don't never know but you know i, I have problems and we've talked about this before um with you know now of course shannon if he did do what this girl is saying um which i totally believe because he's an nba player and i believe all nba players cheat i've told you this it's just something that wives have to turn a blind eye to deal with and hope once the motherfuckers retire that they can get them and everything will be fine then that they've sold their oats and um you know they're ready to be a family man but my problem is with people who are 100 percent gung-ho with cheating with a married man Okay, a well-known married man at that. You was fine with being flown all over everywhere and getting fucked to death. But then when you get tired of him acting like he's a happy family man, you decide to blast him. And then not only that, but you blast him anonymously. How fucked up is that? Okay, I just think that people who do shit like that, they got shit coming to them as well. Shannon, of course, if it's true, you know, it might be the nail in the coffin for his marriage. He's going to have to pay for it. But for motherfuckers like this anonymous woman, she going to pay for shit like that too. I, I just don't have respect for people who do things like that. It's it just, just, just a problem that I have. So, yeah, you guys. I mean, we'll see what happens with Monica and Shannon. I, you know, I don't want a marriage to break up a union, okay, that God put together. You know, I'm just hoping that they're able to work it out. But, you know, with the public scrutiny and folks want to know what's going on with their relationship, it's going to be very, very difficult. Also, speaking of sliding in DMs, okay, I was thinking of LeBron James. Supposedly, Mr. LeBron James slid into slid. Is that the right word? He slid. I guess slid is still back, is still, um, it's still a word I could use. He slid into Instagram models, DMs, uh, Rachel, Rachel Bush. Looked like he was trying to talk to her, but it was innocent enough. It wasn't nothing in there that was suggesting that he was, but you know, it was like, what the fuck are you trying to talk to Miss Rachel Bush for in the first fucking place? Okay, first fucking place. <laughs> Coffee, y'all. So Miss Rachel Bush, she put the DM out there, okay? Put lebron james on blast evidently rachel bush is seeing cleveland browns player um jordan poyer okay and uh also ironically enough miss rachel and mr jordan was at a cleveland cavaliers game sitting courtside uh the, the very day <laughs> that supposedly lebron james jumped into her damn dm so you know listen this is what i want to say to you basketball players out there now if you're gonna have um these kind of, you know, proclivities. I need you to get your whole grabbing skills a little bit more together now. You fucking rich. Just like everybody needs a weed roller, okay, a drug carrier. Damn it, you also need you a hoe grabber. And that means that that is the person 
who goes out and gets whoever the fuck you're trying to get with. Why would you put your own self out there? Now, they're saying that LeBron James didn't do that. You know, he's got assistants. He's got other people that have um, access to his social media. And I guess that could also be true. But if that's the case, I'm going to need you to tighten up on that backstroke too. The fuck? Why do you let people get to your social media and then put you out there like that? That is a problem all the way around. I was disappointed that you know LeBron James if it was true that he did that but you know again basketball players they cheat you guys they cheat and the sooner you believe what the fuck I tell you you won't be so damn surprised when stories like this come out LeBron stop all this foolishness with your damn wife and your kids at home another relationship that's on the house well not a sports player couple but um you know, Peter and Cynthia. Everybody seems to be real happy about the fact that these two are breaking up. And I think that that's a terrible way to be. What is it with our society when um, we find out that a relationship is going asunder? <laughs> Shout out to Apollo. And we cheer something like that on. I, I think that's terrible. I, I keep reading in Cynthia's comments, you know, she's now released this luggage line and you know, people was like, oh, that's the luggage that you pack when you leave Peter. And I was just like, that is a fucked up way to be. I mean, I know they're celebrities. And, um, you know, you open your private life to the public. You know, it's always oh, fair game. But I just, man, maybe as a married woman, you know, I just think that it's terrible that people are excited and happy about the fact that they, you know, are breaking up. You know, I think Peter and Cynthia, they was a cool enough couple. Yeah, the shit started off rocky. It don't help that they're on a, you know, a top reality show that really has not helped their relationship. I've been around them before they were even on the show in a very personal setting, and they seem to have been a pretty happy enough couple. So it's, it's sad to me that they're breaking up, and I think it's terrible that people are so excited about it. You know, I hope that they're able to work it out. Of course, I don't know all the ins and outs of what's happened there. I still don't have proof that Peter has cheated. And until somebody come out, damn it, I'm not going to believe that he's cheated. Okay, because as many times as he's said for the person to come out, I'm I'm waiting on that. I mean, ain't nobody got that much fucking money in the Bailey um, Thomas <laughs> relationship to pay bitches off and keep them quiet. So that's why I'm just like, yeah, I, I'm going to believe that maybe, you know, it's just the pressures of everybody else on that relationship as well as it not being that strong to begin with. You know, I, I think that that's the reason for the demise of this relationship. But uh, yeah, sad, you guys stop being that way. That's fucked up to be. And when you guys that aren't married finally get married, you, maybe you'll understand that it is hard. It's hard work. Okay, and I say that all the time, and I appreciate being married, and I, you know, I wouldn't want it any other way. But, you know, we've had some good and bad times, too. You know, so I can sympathize with everybody that's in this predicament right now. But, um, yeah, I just, I just want rock stars. Y'all do better than that. Quit, quit waiting for people to break up. Okay, I mean, fuck. I mean, What's, where's a good story, you guys? Toya and Memphis. <laughs> they gonna be on marriage boot camp. Maybe they gonna have the, the last hope for marital union and fidelity and happiness. I'm lying. Even Toya said that that shit was filmed a year ago and that it's over. She's in a different place. <laughs> no, well, y'all, I tried. Oh, the beehive is mad as fuck that Beyonce ain't released this goddamn album. I think that the formation tour kicks off in Miami on the 27th of April. That's less than two weeks away from today. And uh, still, we don't have a new album. And motherfuckers is in the flur. I know you guys saw when um, the Scorpion show, Kevin and McHale was even on Shade Room, okay? And McHale had to make it very clear that they want this fucking album and they mean right now. And man, I'm telling you, after she had her Super Bowl performance, okay, it was pundits everywhere. They was putting out the dates. It was do any day now, right? And so people thought, well, maybe it'll come out on April 4th. And why wouldn't it? The number four means quite a bit to Beyonce. Uh, it is the date of her mother's birthday. It's the date of her birthday. And it is the date of Jay-Z's birthday. Not only that, but she and Jay-Z celebrated their eighth anniversary on April 4th of this year. They have a daughter named Blue Ivy. Okay, blue, four letters. Ivy is the Roman numeral. I-V-4. 
okay? We also know that Miss Blue Ivy turned four this year and that she and her husband Jay-Z even have the Roman numeral four tattooed on their ring finger. <laughs> Man, that motherfucker April 4th came and went with the fucking speed of light, didn't it? Ain't no fucking album and y'all is mad as hell, okay? <laughs> but uh, Beyonce said, wait a minute now, I got you. I got all the beehive, okay? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna package this up real nice like, <laughs> throw it at you. I put out Ivy Park for that ass, okay? Yes, that's right, bitches. Beehive, you take your fat asses and get in formation in line. <laughs> Buy you some fucking yoga pants. I tell you, I was cracking up. I said that Beyonce show got y'all nerves bad, okay? It's just like everybody is at this point where they pissed at her now and it's not like it's the first time that she's done something like this didn't she also go on a tour what was the tour beehive i'm sure y'all got all this information locked and loaded in the brain was it the miss carter tour i don't think she had a new album then okay she put out a couple of little songs but it was never an album and uh, guess what y'all was fine with that shit so this time we have formation now we have been waiting there is a lot of anticipation but it's, it's sort of like iPhone anticipation. All of the fangirls and the fanboys of the iPhone community, okay, right when it's about to come out, it'd be all this shit on the internet. These motherfuckers is mad. They want to know when it is, why Apple ain't put out the information yet, when the shit is coming, okay? They be pissed. They be arguing, all of that. Then when the fucking phone come out, everybody all right. It's like anticipating fucking somebody. Y'all know how it is, especially ladies, okay? You think about this man that you really been wanting to get with, child, you done got your outfit together, you know what poses you gonna make, you know what sounds you gonna make, you know what the fuck you gonna say, okay? You run that shit over and over and over in your mind, you see spots in the house, you be like, mm-hmm, right there too. <laughs> You see the nigga? Okay, it's always anticipation. You just looking at him like, oh, I cannot wait. You build up to the moment, and then when you get it, you be like, okay, I'm fine. <laughs> that shit is over. It's the anticipation, you guys. And it's the same with Beyonce. Yes, I'm sure she'll put out a quality album. We want to see more of Beyonce because of the fact of formation, and we're hoping that, you know, she says some, you know, socially conscious Black Lives Matter, you know, even might even jump into the political field, although I'm just like, y'all know Beyonce ain't really the brightest. We just hoping, we just want some music. <laughs> you can be all right with music right now, B. We're expecting a lot, but you guys gonna be okay? You gonna go to that damn concert, whether she got new music or not. You gonna look at the repeated 5,000 steps that she's done in all the rest of her damn <laughs> concerts, and you gonna act like it's all new. You gonna enjoy, you gonna sing, you gonna be happy, you gonna have tears child it's gonna be okay and if she decide to put this damn album out the day of the concert guess what you're gonna be just fine then too yes i said she don't give a fuck about how mad y'all are okay you will wait <laughs> All right, you guys, some very sad rest in peace uh, stories we got to do. First, Doug Banks, he is a Chicago DJ who has been around for more than 30 years. I remember when he was a DJ in L.A. I believe he had a syndicated uh, show. We all know the name Doug Banks. He was 57 years old, and they say that he died from complications of diabetes. You guys, we're hearing more and more people dying from complications of diabetes. Very, very sad. I guess he had been sick. I don't follow his career. Um, I saw a video of him saying, I think it was even somewhere around the end of last year, you know, that he was hopeful that is, you know, hopeful for his career and the things that he had coming up. So very sad. They say he's left behind four kids, two adult kids, and then he has two college age daughters. We also have a rest in peace for Blood, Sweat, and Heal star Daisy Llewellyn, who died from a rare form of bile duct cancer. We had all seen on the show that she had cancer. I didn't really watch that show, but I actually happened to see a few episodes where she was getting treatment, you know, chemotherapy and radiation. Um, and, um, you know, she was just very bubbly and hopeful that she wanted to make sure that her parents didn't worry about her, that she was going to be okay. And she was just very positive that the, you know, that the d disease didn't have her. Um, I actually thought that the disease was in, it was in remission. And I'm not sure if it was or wasn't, if it had gone away and come back. But uh, yeah, she died 
I believe they said at the age of 36, so sad. A beautiful girl, bubbly personality, and uh, just one of those ones that we were hoping was going to be beat the disease. Cancer is a terrible, terrible, terrible disease. My husband had a friend whose son died from leukemia, two, two years old, I believe, just the other day. Um, and he said it was like one of the saddest funerals that he's ever been to. My whole thing is that this cancer thing, I mean, I am afraid that we are all going to die of some form of cancer. You know, I had my uh, mammogram the other day, and uh, yes, it came back negative, and I didn't have any problems. But, um, you know, it's always at the back of my mind. My mom died from breast cancer, and it's, it's just always a real fear that that I could get the disease. And it doesn't even have to be breast cancer. It could be other forms of it, but, you know, just... Oh, it's just terrible. Yeah, our prayers go out to both the Banks family and the Llewellyn family. I know there's drama with the Llewellyn family. I'm not even going to I'm not even going to talk about that right now because this is about um, two lives that were lost and the families who lost them. Prayers up to both of those families. Rest in peace, Doug Banks and Daisy Llewellyn. Everybody always asks me if I watch the show Underground. I definitely watch the show Underground. Watch it every week. Love the show. Didn't watch it yesterday, though, because I had too many things I was trying to, <laughs> trying to watch last night. But yeah, the show created by Mikasha Green and Joe Pukoski. And it is about, uh, basically about the slave revolt. A story that we necessarily haven't heard, at least not to this degree. We all know about Underground Railroad and what Harriet Tubman did. Um, but we don't know about the for real struggle that these slaves have gone through uh, making this 600 mile, you know, journey to freedom from Macon, Georgia up north. So this is the story about it. I think in the racial climate of the United States today, it's a perfect time for the show. I think they do a great, great job of tying, um, you know, what's definitely historical content with um, music today John Legend is the is one of the executive producers because they wanted him to be in charge of the music score making sure that it all made sense and I think they do a great job of tying that all together I mean it's modern music I mean when the show first opened we see him running to, to black skinheads and you know it's a driving beat all right it seems very frantic I mean even that song even before underground came out that show that song gets me hyped so I feel like they do a good job of putting new music in with this the show and yeah I love the show okay it stars Journey, Smollett, Bell, forgot that she's married and um, Aldous Hodge okay they play Noah and Rosalie Aldous Hodge you guys did not even realize that that was the guy that played MC Wren and straight out of Compton. Okay, maybe it's because his eyes is always so fucking big on the show. I said, you ain't never seen a motherfucker eye just every time he talking. <laughs> I was like, ah, oh, damn, okay. But that Noah's something fine, ain't he? He is a cutie. All jokes aside, I, I, I love it. I love the show. I think the acting is good. Um, I think it's the right amount of drama, the right amount of entertainment, the right amount of, um, you know, action. It's thrilling. And uh, while some parts might be a little bit fantastic, I believe that, you know, they haven't lost, at least so far, the story of what we're trying to do and keeping us all invested and, in, you know, really wanting to see what happens next, even though we know what happens next. Okay, so, uh, yeah, I love the show. You know, I wouldn't have minded to review it, but... You know, I need my shows to all line up. You know, that's why I was saying, you know, people have been asking me if I drop Empire, would I pick up Underground? Well, I'm not going to pick up Underground in the middle of the season. I would have to wait for the new season. Something tells me Underground won't be on the same time that Empire and Scandal and How to Get Away with Murder. They have pretty much the same schedule. I feel like Underground is probably going to be like a spring show where How to Get Away with Murder, Scandal, and Empire will be false shows. You understand what I'm saying? So, yeah, it doesn't line up. And I got too many fucking videos that I'm trying to do already, you know. So, yeah, that's why Underground might never really happen. But I also have told you guys plenty of times that I have a lot of shows that I watch that I love, that I enjoy just to be able to watch them and not necessarily have to speak on them. It's a lot of work to speak on shows, all right? So sometimes I just want to sit back just like you guys and watch a show. So I watch a lot of shows, Bates Motel, okay, House of Cards, okay, The Blacklist. I like that show, The Catch. 
I was watching the OJ Simpson case and now they're saying that they might, you know, bring back very popular cases there. I mean, I watch a lot of shows. It's not just reality shows, okay? I got to keep these fucking brain cells together some kind of way. All right, so I do enjoy regular scripted shows and I watch them, but I don't want to review them all. And um, I don't know if this one will ever be one that I do. But yeah, I watch Underground. Do you guys watch Underground? Do you like it? Do you love it? What do you think? Lastly, you guys got to end it on the on a bright note, which is kind of a sad note. The end of an era. We saw Kobe's last game played for the NBA um, just last night where he scored 60 points. He had all kind of great stats. He played the game beautifully. And uh, yeah, you guys just uh, just I'm uh, so sad that he is no longer playing now. Truth be told, Kobe hasn't been um, at 100% for a long time. He's gotten older. His body has taken quite a bit of abuse. And um, even though there are players around his age or maybe even older still playing in the NBA, they haven't played with a whole everything like Kobe Bryant has. And hate him or love him, you have to respect what Kobe Bryant has been able, been able to achieve. He's been with the same team his entire um, career. There's been extreme highs, you guys. I cannot even tell you. Uh, the three-peat days, the Robert Ory, Kobe Bryant, Shaq, Derek Fisher. I mean, those days are days that I hold near and dear to my heart. You guys don't know all of the countless games that I've watched, that I've screamed at the top of my lungs, how much happiness and joy that they have brought to me and my family, okay? Us running up and down the fucking streets. I remember one time my girlfriend, Simone and Crystal, we went to the Staples Center to watch um, one of the playoff games when they were away, um, but they would show the game on the Jumbotron at jumbotron actually at the staples center and when i fucking tell you the excitement that oh my god i mean we were so fucking pumped you would have thought that they was all playing on the damn woods right there you know it's nothing like a los angeles laker fan when the lakers is, was was really at their highest it's nothing like it you guys and for cities that <laughs> got teams that never achieved that man you guys are being robbed because it is the best fucking feeling Okay, we've had extreme lows with the Lakers, and I'm sure you guys remember the shit that happened with Kobe, the rape in Denver, the fallout from that, him talking about Shaq, giving out Shaq's business. Okay, the team went through it for real, and I really thought that that was in the end of that team. I wasn't sure that they were going to be able to recover for something like that, but you guys, even that is just a toast to... Um, just what Kobe is, like I told you guys before, that he's able to compartmentalize and even turn things like that into something within himself where he is able to fight through and still do it, all right, and still earn the respect of people, even though motherfuckers, I mean, this motherfuckers to this day that cannot stand Kobe Bryant. I was talking to one of the guys at my job today, and he was talking about how Tiger Woods felt completely apart after, you know, a very large scandal, and... I was just like, yeah, that lets you know right there. I mean, what Kobe was able to achieve, you guys, but not even talking about that. You know, he's just been through so much. He is the NBA ball player who took over the asshole reigns of Michael Jordan. <laughs> yeah, he is the end of that era where, you know, those basketball players of that era really didn't give a fuck about, you know, the what you thought about them. Okay, it was more so about the game. They wasn't really trying to be, you know, out, you know, social media. and But social media wasn't the same back then. But they wasn't really trying to, all they pretty much care about is the game. Okay, basketball has changed a lot these days. Okay, it's, it's way more distractions and other things that happen. But um, that's why I say that Kobe is the end of an era, at least the beginning of the end of an era. Because, fuck it, we can get rid of the damn whole San Antonio Spurs team because all them motherfuckers is old. You know, it's just we're, we're going to see a shift in, in, in NBA ball playing. Um, it's time now for the Lakers to try to regroup. And it's sad that they're starting on, you know, this regrouping on scandal, the shit with Nick, Nick Young and you know, uh, D'Angelo, but, you know, y'all, I just, when, you know, I just was, I watched the, fir the first half of the game, and then I fell asleep, and then I woke up right at the end, you know, it was like the good Lord was telling me, Roxanne, open your eyes, I woke up, I was able to see the very ending of the game, and then I was kind of in and out of consciousness when he was talking, you know, all of the tributes, and watching him hug everybody, and I didn't see all of that, but, 
yeah, I just, you guys, it's just, it's just a, it's a bittersweet feeling. But I admire what uh, Kobe Bryant has done, his wife, Vanessa Bryant. Okay, now we've had our feelings about Vanessa for sure. But, um, you know, Vanessa had every reason to leave Kobe Bryant and she's been there. She would have made a killing on that divorce. She had two kids by him and very obvious infidelity. It was just like she was gonna make a killing and you know, she was able to stick it out still. And I think that she deserves props for that. Yes, I know that you wasn't playing, you know, you wasn't throwing the baskets or whatever the saying was, but I still feel like Vanessa Bryant did hold him up and uh, hold him together. But I just, I just love Kobe. I love Kobe, and I'm just sad to see him go. But you know, in, in, in very similar terms, maybe he's passed the torch on to Steph Curry. Steph Curry, who is not human when it comes to playing basketball, um, he was able to, I think they said they, he scored his 400th, was it his 400th three-pointer, you guys, in a season, not a career. This motherfucker is shooting balls all over that damn court and making it. Maybe, you know, it was like symbolic. Their games was at the same time last night. They both had fantastic games. Um, and uh, Steph Curry is now going to, you know, take the take over the reins and be the, the, the next living legend, you know, and we'll go through all this again when it's time for him to retire. But, you know, what do you guys think? I mean, do you think that Steph Curry is, is the, he is definitely unexplainable. The shit that he is able to do is just fantastic. I'm just real glad for both of these boys. Black men, okay, doing the damn thing. Does my heart proud. What do you guys think Kobe will do? I don't see him as a commentator type. You know, he seems like he is completely over it. He said he ain't coming back down <laughs> to um, downtown LA. You know, if these guys want to work with him, they're going to have to come out to Orange County where the fuck he is. He is ready to sit his ass down somewhere, try to get healed, spend time with his family. And uh, yeah, I, I love Kobe for that. So I don't know. You see commentating in this future? I don't. I may be buying a team. Okay, owning part of a team. I, I can see that. Maybe he'll go on quietly to be involved in, you know, more businesses and things like that. But I don't know. All I want to say is, Kobe, you played a great game. You've done all of Los Angeles so proud. Okay, West Side, y'all know I got to represent. I am so sad to see you go. But I am so proud of all that you've been able to achieve. All right, Mamba out. shit i got a little time i think i'm about to do this damn empire review okay y'all gonna see the same outfit i'm gonna take this jacket off though it's hot <laughs> anyway you guys we do this every single week make sure that you rate comment and subscribe and make sure you come back until next time rock stars bye